Hello, and welcome to the third video in the Tank Platoon Tactics series. In the last video, you saw a demonstration of how to conduct an attack by fire to destroy an enemy within an engagement area. While this is certainly useful, there are tactical situations where you will need to employ both fire and maneuver in order to accomplish your mission. In this scenario, our company team has been tasked to conduct an attack to seize objective Yin. An attack is typically made up of a minimum of two elements, those elements being the assault element, which we'll cover in more detail in the next video, and the support by fire element. Now, support by fire is a tactical task in which the responsible element gains fire superiority over the enemy with the purpose of enabling freedom of maneuver for the assault element. This is very similar to conducting an attack by fire, with the major difference being that a support by fire element is meant to support the assault element. Make sense? As always, you can pause the video to read the briefing. In this mission, our platoon, 1st Platoon or Red Platoon, will conduct a tactical road march along Route Pound, where we will establish in our assigned objective rally point in a hide site. While this is occurring, Black Platoon, the headquarters platoon, consisting of the company commander, the company executive officer, will follow our platoon along Route Pound, where they will establish in their objective rally point. Simultaneously, in the south, 2nd Platoon, or White Platoon, and 3rd Platoon, or Blue Platoon, will conduct a tactical march along Route Dollar and will establish in the vicinity of their two objective rally points. Once all of our forces are established and on the command of the company commander, my platoon, Red Platoon, as well as Black Platoon, will establish the two support by fire positions and will gain fire superiority on objective Yin by employing both direct and indirect fires. Once we have achieved the effect of suppression on the enemy, White Platoon will begin an assault from their objective rally point, and they will attack from south to north across objective Yin, destroying any enemy in the objective before establishing an attack by fire position oriented towards the north. Following them will be Blue Platoon, who will deploy their dismounts on the objective in order to seize objective Yin. Once this is done, we'll be given the order to move from support by fire position red to the west, crossing objective yin, where we will establish an attack by fire. Sound good? Let's go ahead and get started. As before, I'm going to start a new route. We'll go on the march and I'm going to maneuver through the majority of the vegetation located down here using the road before following long route pound itself, where we will move into the position of support by fire red. I'm gonna make sure that we're moving at top speed, our spacing will be set to close, and our formation is in column. Once we reach our objective rally point, I'm gonna set our tactic as stay, and I'm gonna make sure that we are oriented towards the west. Make sure the formation is a line, and our spacing is at normal interval as well. Now, the purpose of using a stay tactic is, upon moving to this position, our tanks, as the name implies, will remain in position and will not move in attempt to utilize the terrain to be able to get better observation in fields of fire. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and give an engage order up to the support by fire itself, where I want to orient on the center of the town. We'll make sure that we are moving in a line formation at normal spacing and at fast speed. All right, everything looks to be in order. Now, once we, of course, reach our objective rally point, we'll remain in position until I press the C key, in which case I'll order the platoon to continue its advance. We want to make sure we're in a column formation close and we are currently oriented on our route of travel, so everything is good in that case. So let's go ahead and begin the mission and see how this plays out. So we've of course been given the order to begin our move. Now we're going to be crossing phase line Lyra as well as phase line Pe Peso. And in this case, we have to report the crossings in both phase lines. Now phase lines are graphic control measures which are used by uh, really leaders in the military to be able to control where their elements are, as well as it's a quick reference to know where your forces are located. For example, in this case, I'm going to report that I am crossing phase line Lyra. So the company commander knows that 1st platoon, traveling along Route Pound, has just crossed phase line Lyra, 
could easily reference that on his map. I'll go ahead and uh, turn on time compression until we reach the support by fire position. So at this point we are reaching our objective rally point. And once in that position we will uh, remain in our hide side until the company commander gives us the signal to move forward. Like before, we want to preserve the element of tactical surprise so that um, our forces can all move forward, establish the support by fire position simultaneously, gain suppression on the enemy. While the enemy is then oriented towards the east, our forces can attack from the south and we'll be able to destroy them in an easy manner. And of course, with our forces at uh, given a stay tactic, they're going to move into position and irrespective of the terrain and what they can see and their uh, fields of fire, they're going to remain in that position. This is of course valuable in cases like this where you absolutely do not want any of your tanks moving forward of where you tell them to go. I'll go ahead and speed this up until White and Blue Platoon move into their objective rally points. And at this point, we have been given the order to begin our move, so by pressing C, we will move into the position of our support by fire. Also, I do apologize. I did have a bit of a technical glitch uh, that occurred, so I did have to restart the mission. But we're at the same position as before, so uh, there should be minimal impact to uh, any degradation in this playthrough. As you can see with this being given, White Platoon has already begun moving towards their assault. Black Platoon is moving into their support by fire position with us doing the same. Attack by, or excuse me, uh, fire mission on Alpha Bravo 0028 has already been called. You can hear that in the background. And we're going to move forward and establish uh, suppression by using direct fire. Our units are now moving forward. I'm going to go ahead and occupy the gunner's position and start scanning to see if we can identify uh, anything of note tank-wise or armored fighting vehicle-wise. Which uh, looks like we've got a PC right there. Pretty easy kill. Uh, that's, however, a little more dangerous. Specifically those uh, enemy tanks there in the woods. Fire again. And that's definitely a kill. Now we've got the, uh, where there's one, there's always more. So that is two tanks destroyed. Looking to identify the third one. I think that's him right there. Cannot tell. Or that may be the turret of the other one. I just, hold on. I think right there. Yep, enemy tank. And that's a kill. Okay, so... Tallying up the damage right here, we have destroyed what looks to be a platoon of uh, mechanized infantry, as well as a platoon of tanks on the objective. And what I want to do right now as well is... Uh, First off, ensure that we're remaining in position on the hill by adjusting our sectors of fire. And two, I'm going to go ahead and split up my section right now, or my platoon, I should say, into sections. I'm going to give a retreat order to my section, move back here, and then uh, give the command to execute a reload. So you can tell I only have five sable rounds remaining in my ready rack. We'll see how my platoon sergeant's currently doing. And he looks like he is doing just fine. So, no real issues right now. Of course, with this uh, support by fire being successful, we've enabled White Platoon to maneuver through and not encounter enemy tanks in their flank. Looks like the White Platoon is engaging a tank platoon to the north as well. And our tanks in uh, my section have already begun their reload. 
it's important to time these strategically during the fight uh, so that you're able to ensure that you have enough ammunition for any follow-on actions. So in this case, I mentioned performing an attack and requiring the use of maneuvers. So as you can tell, based on the position of the enemy forces, largely surrounding the objective, both to the north as well as to the south and on the objective itself, establishing in a static position here or even to the south would have limited effects versus white platoon attacking from south to north. They're able to use the advantage of maneuver. So one, they're less likely to be um, engaged accurately by enemy direct fire. And two, they're able to move forward on the enemy, denying them the advantage of terrain and destroy them in place. All right, my second tank here is already reloaded. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm going to remove him from that position and have him orient more towards the north just to protect our flank. Though I believe right now White Platoon is largely engaging enemies there. And uh, obviously not, since the enemy has moved into the city of Objective Yin, which can be definitely difficult to identify at times. Alright, we're being given the order to advance forward to the far side of Objective Yin. I'm going to give an engage command, but I'm also going to give us an echelon right, so that we are facing... Uh, the majority of our firepower towards the right flank, right. since we have determined that enemy forces are located in that vicinity. Based on, of course, the map marker there. I assume that White Platoon will be engaging them, but that's something that I want to make sure of, of course. I'll go ahead and occupy second, uh, or my number two tank here and scan to the right to see if I can identify any enemy tanks, though he may have already been engaged and destroyed, which I think is the case, which is certainly a good thing. So echelon left and right are not formations that are commonly used, but as you can see in this case, uh, you've got very good firepower to the right flank in this case, and you've got pretty decent firepower to the front as well. So. If you know that the enemy is on a specific flank, it is a useful formation to use. I'll go ahead and give us a top speed, and I'm going to transition back to a line, based on the fact that I believe that all of the enemy that we will encounter in this scenario have been destroyed. And we also already have a blue platoon there, and they are... Uh, putting their dismounts onto the objective, who are moving in and going to clear through the buildings themselves. Though I don't believe that there is any uh, infantry threat at this time. We'll go ahead and turn on time compression here, since there is no enemy in sight. As you can tell with Blue Platoon here, they're moving through in a slow and deliberate manner, with infantry out front and the uh, Bradleys in the rear being able to conduct um, basically their own support by fire for the And it appears that the enemy, before being destroyed, were able to call for indirect fire to the south on Blue Platoon. Now, again, if we had remained in position, uh, Blue Platoon, who apparently lost uh, two infantry fighting vehicles, unfortunately, moving here, most likely due to the tanks in the city of Objective Yen. Um, but in the event they had remained in position, they would be being hit by artillery now, which is, of course, an advantage of having maneuver on your side. Appears that there are more tanks to the north. However, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give ourselves an echelon right, though that is really White Platoon's job of ensuring that they are destroyed. And we're going to continue our movement into this position. And that's White Platoon engaging the enemy tanks located to our north. 
And that's two. I believe there would be a full platoon coming, so we'll let them uh, continue their engagement. There's not much we can do with our particular role in the mission. And we have reached the uh, end of the operation. Major victory. Blue forces unfortunately lost two vehicles, but we were able to kill 13 overall. I think that one miss was... Uh, based on firing an impact round into the woods. Uh, with that being an HE style round, or excuse me, a heat style round, any impact on vegetation would cause it to detonate prematurely. So let's look at the red side and see how they are arrayed. So in this case, their company commander was located in the woods. It's a bit difficult for us to locate. Additionally, there is, of course, the mechanized infantry in the center of town, not too difficult to spot, as well as a tank platoon to the north and the south. So going through this operation, they largely remain static. Um, initiated with indirect fires, we immediately pulled up both black to our north and red to our south. Our platoon, of course, engaged and destroyed the mechanized infantry, engaged and destroyed the enemy tank platoon. White platoon began maneuvering along their attack axis, engaged and destroyed the enemy tank platoon to the north. Um, the company commander here was able to unfortunately identify and destroy two of our infantry fighting vehicles before being killed. And with white platoon in position oriented towards the north, the enemy's reinforcements moved in to attempt to, of course, uh, bring more firepower to the battle. But it was too little too late and they were destroyed as they began maneuvering from north to south along their avenue of approach. So that's the basics of conducting a support by fire in a company attack scenario. So if you've got any specific questions, you can leave those in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video in the series. Have a great day.